Okay, so welcome everyone. Thanks for joining the session today. Uh, my name is Corey Dow, Technical Marketing Engineer with um, HP Aruba Network Networking. Today in this session, we're going to cover QoS policing uh, with the Exceed Action of Remark. Okay, this is the typical agenda that we always cover, so I'm just going to skip through this. We do have a demo at the end that I'll be presenting, so just to bear with us. So why is policing important for customers? So QoS traffic policing is it's widely used in policing traffic entering ISP networks. So traffic policies act based on match criteria with different traffic classes that can achieve the following results. Forward the packet if the result is conforming. Drop the packet if the result is exceed, i.e. non-conforming bandwidth. Or now with 10.13, remark the packet or downgrade the service if the result is exceed. So for example, on a downstream switch, traffic marked with expedited forwarding uh, DSCP values may be remarked to say something uh, of lower service such as CS5 as it leads towards an upstream switch. And then an upstream switch could then upon receipt forward the exceed traffic into a lower priority queue to, to allow only the highest priority traffic to be serviced. And in most cases, this is a VoIP traffic that we're competing with. The policing policies may be applied either in the inbound or outbound direction. And some policing acronyms just to be familiar with from the RFC 2697 standard. So CIR is the committed information rate. So this threshold defines the average bandwidth limit, KBPS on AOSCX, guaranteed for traffic that conforms to the, the traffic policy. CBS is the committed burst size, and it's a it's a byte token bucket value that defines the number of bytes in the token bucket that is allowed to exceed the CIR, and this must not be zero or the rate limit won't take effect. And unused by uh, AOSCX, but there's also an excess burst size, and it's used by some vendors with tricolor policing policies for red, yellow, and green. So we, we just have a single token bucket, but other vendors do have a second token bucket, and you'll see that when we present the competitive information later on. So for platform support, so you can see that we've added with a 1013, so it's 6300, 64, 8100, 8325, 8360, and the 10K. Uh, we've added this, uh, this policing uh, exceed action remark feature, and the only Caveat is that the 8325 and 10K platforms, they only support applying the traffic policies in the in the, in the ingress direction. They don't allow uh, policies in the egress direction. So just be aware of that. And I do have some links to the existing QoS documentation that, that covers these features. So for use cases, so the, the main use case that comes to mind is, is singular dual ISP with bandwidth uh, allocation contracts where you can see we've got competing EF track traffic coming from these edge devices. So in this example, we've got VoIP traffic being uh, marked with expedited forwarding, as well as HVAC traffic that's also marked with expedited forwarding. So this traffic inside the organization, you clearly wanna keep this marked as EF, but in some cases, vendors, ISPs, they charge uh, bit rate contracts to customers. So that, so for example, they might have a 10 gig physical link but they they're charged uh, to a certain bandwidth requirement. So in this example, it's a, it's a four gig uh, limit that they if they exceed, then they'll get charged additionally um, beyond that. So in some cases, they want to be able to downgrade that service as it leaves the environment going towards the ISP. So they they can um, not necessarily be charged for that. And if the ISP can handle that traffic, they'll handle it. But otherwise, uh, they'll in, in all likelihood drop it if if there's other competing EF from say other other vendors that they need to process. Let's see here. So yeah, so I just explained this. So in this example, so we're just we're, we're taking the HVAC monitoring traffic, which is also important, but as it leaves the environment, so the core and the border are gonna gonna remark that um, traffic for HVAC to CS5 in this case to as it egresses towards the ISP. And that's what I just mentioned there. And so the ISP's next hop can decide what to do with the lower priority traffic. And so drop or recolor the packets with lower precedence. And ISP2 might also have a different QoS policy depending on how much the customer pays for the bandwidth, uh, which may need to be considered in the policy creation. 
So details for the feature. So IPv4 and v6 supported traffic classes and policies. The policy may be applied to physical interfaces, lags, VLAN, sub interfaces, or a global policy. Applied in either the inbound or the outbound directions. And the policies may be configured either through CLI or REST. Uh, one caveat to mention from a support perspective, multiple actions are not permitted when the exceed remark action is used in a policy. So in this example, we can see exceed DSCP CS1 with an action mirror one is not supported because mirror one is a second secondary um, option for the command. So when you use the exceed DSCP option, just, just be aware that, that that is a limitation. Uh, supported on VL VXLAN or non-VXLAN connected ports for VXLAN, if, if there's a DSCP marking on the inner packet, it's copied to the outer headers. Uh, so either, either VXLAN or non-VXLAN, this feature will work. And something to be aware of as, as well as the meters and the traffic policing policies, they're shared across all interfaces assigned to the policy, unless the per interface argument is used when applying the policy. So this was released in 10.08, and it's, I don't think it's really what widely understood, but if, if you have, you know, say 48 ports in the switch, for example, with a five meg CIR, that five megs is aggregated across all the ports in the switch. So if you want to have a unique rate limit policy per port, you need to use the per interface option to, uh, to provide that, and you'll see that in a demo later. Just be aware, CBS internally is set to 1500 bytes if it's uh, set to zero in the policy. This is just a, an internally set value, but in all likelihood, that value is, is not going to be enough to achieve the rate limit that you're looking for. So you need to make sure that the, the token bucket is set for CBS correctly, or you'll end up with the rate limit not being achieved. And we've got some examples of that coming up. And port-based policies have higher precedence over policies applied to the VLAN, so just be aware of that. So for configuration, standard configuration here, so QoS Trust, you need to have QoS Trust DSCP enabled and config because the default is not to trust DSCP markings. And you want to configure the traffic classes to remark in the classes. Um, specify the CIR and CBS values in the remark pol policy that matches on the specific classes. And apply the policy to, the in to an interface either in the ingress direction uh, or the, the egress direction with the out keyword to activate the policy on the port. So just in this example, we can see here, I've got the police or min and max values that you can set here. The bit rate in KV. PS, uh, so this is um, 1000 kbps and the burst size of what we're setting here, as well as the XC DSCP value here, CS5. So we're just matching on any traffic coming in and whatever uh, traffic that comes in, we're just gonna hit, we're gonna remark it with CS5 if it exceeds this threshold. And you can see we've applied the policy to um, port 111. And the same example just on the egress side as well. And just uh, so you're aware as well, so the remark option that you provide here at the end, it can it can take the name or it can take the code, and I've just copied in some of the different code points that are typically used by our customers. So for equivalent configurations for AOS CX, so you can see you I've already kind of got through this on the last slide what the AOS CX configuration looks like, and then so for H3C, HP, Comware, uh, very similar. You know, see, would they still match an ACL for the, the traffic class? And then they apply it, you know, just in the inbound or outbound direction. And then also a similar example for Cisco IOS, where in this case they've got um, a CIR 1000, just like we have it on CX. And then when an exceed action occurs, they can mark down the, uh, the value from um, whatever the packet is to whatever the markdown value is. So it's it's something of lower priority. And same as, as uh, CX, you know, applied in the ingress and the egress direction. And so for AOS switch, uh, we can set rate limits in AOS switch, but we don't have the CIR or CBS uh, values available. So for REST class creation, I just provide an example here of how to do it. So, you know, first step, you kind of retrieve a cookie to start the session. 
These are curl commands you can copy into the command line and these will work for you. Um, create a, a IPv4 class IP, IPv3 traffic you can see here in this case. So I'm just creating a class here. And then I'm adding an entry, a class entry with sequence 10 to match the traffic that I'm going to be matching in the, in the policy later. And then once you create the class entries, you have to update the config version to apply the change to hardware. Otherwise, you'll get an error saying that the, the class doesn't match the running configuration. So this is required a required step for completing that um, configuration change. And this is just the resulting uh, output from the show class commands based on the rest creation for the class. And so for the same thing on the, the policy creation side of things, so again, start with retrieving a cookie. You're gonna create the policy remark on exceed and then create a sequence 10 with an empty action set in this case. And then the same as the class arguments, you're gonna update the config version to apply the changes to the hardware. And then what we're later is just gonna apply the, the policy action set. So this is the same policy actions that you've seen in the previous slides. And the resulting configuration that you'd see from the CLI gener generated from this rest operation. And just another example of, of doing it with a Swagger UI, all of those same behaviors can, can be achieved by doing this through the Swagger UI, as long as you use the same request bodies that you, you saw in the previous slides. So best practices, we need to consider using the per interface argument to the policy so that the CIR bandwidth isn't shared among policy port members. Um, so if you want to have a unique policy, as I mentioned, per port, uh, you'll need to use this argument. When taking packet captures, it's helpful to add the DSCP field as a column so that it's easy to compare and count both the conforming and the non-conforming packets. And kind of a misconception, but it, you should configure QoS even if there are no oversubscription ratios or congestion because microbursting can still cause congestion in TXQ drops at certain times, depending on the network load. You want to determine which direction you want to apply the policy. So in the inbound or ingress side, when you want the rate limits applied as close as possible to the source of the traffic. And then on the outbound egress side, as the example we showed in the, the main use case, is where you want to rate limit the traffic leaving the core routers to the ISP. And to maintain quality of service, we want to make sure that the markdown non-conforming packets egress the same output queue as the conforming packets, but with a new remark. So for example, EF and CS5 both use Q5. So the remark exceed traffic is CS5. You want to keep it in the same queue to prevent out of order packet delivery. And you want to specify the correct burst rate when applying the CAR and CDS values. And so there's an algorithm here that's defined in the functionality guide for deriving the CBS value based on the rate limit. And it's as it's shown here, it's, it's basically one eighth of the CIR, which means the token bucket will be reset every one eighth of a second. Uh, so for that one example, this is how the algorithm is used to achieve that value. And just some examples of what the uh, different CIR and CBS values would be depending on um, what the the actual CIR is. So if it's five megs or one gig, this is what the values would be. And just with the configuration again, what it looks like when you apply it to the port. So as always for troubleshooting, you want to have a topology diagram ready and showing where the packets are getting remarked and, and the forwarding path, as you can see in the example that I have here. So the recommended troubleshooting flow, you want to check that the sending switch is remarking the non-conforming packets. You want to check that the receiving switch is queuing the traffic into the configured queues. Check that the destination is receiving the non-conforming packets with correct DSCP values. And verify that the diagnostic data is showing the correct details for validation of the feature. And you want to use you want to verify that the feature is working correctly using tools that can set the desired CIR and CDS value meters that perform the traffic patterns correctly. And then finally, use the, the show resources and event logs to diagnose any any issues with uh, potential TCAM or, or otherwise. So for step one for troubleshooting, so this is where we're checking that the sending switch is remarking the non-conforming packets. 
So we're, we're applying a counter policy to the egress interface of switch one in this topology diagram to verify that the packets are getting remarked. So port 113 in this example that connects to switch two. So we have our class here for iperf 3 traffic and the different values or DSCP values that we're matching against. And we're applying this in the outbound direction on port 113. And then we can show policy hit counts to verify that we're seeing both the uh, EF traffic and then also the traffic that we're remarking as CS5, as you can see in this example here. And for step two, we want to check that the receiving switch is queuing the traffic into the configured queues. So in this screenshot, we can see EF and CS5 traffic is correctly egressing Q5, and that represents the default queue profiles configured on the switch. And for step three, check that the destination is receiving the non-conforming packets. So we can do this in a similar fashion on switch two, just by using counter policies uh, to just validate that we're seeing that the, the traffic is getting remarked. So in this example here, so port 111 is connecting to the, the destination, the iperf3 destination, and we can see that there's a combination of EF and CS5 traffic flowing through the, the network. In packet captures, so you want to look that the DSCP field is correctly tagged for the remarked frames. So most of the common code points that I tend to see, I, I just included here. So you'd see what those look like. So EF, CS0, AF21, CS1, and CS5. And as I mentioned before, so kind of just to make things easier to see, you can just add the, the DSCP field as a column when you're looking at it through Wireshark and it makes it so much easier to see the packets as they're getting marked because you can sort you can sort on them. So for internal diagnostics, these are just some commands that you can run to verify that the CAR and CDS is, is active in the configuration. So there's an OVS app kettle command that you have here for the policer functionality. And then as always, the database driven architecture, you can you can do the OVS DB client dump for policy to take a look at the policies that are applied there as well. And so for troubleshooting, so we want to verify that the, uh, using the tools that the CIR and the CBS values meter the conforming packets correctly. So for on, on Linux platforms, uh, the best tool that I found is iperf3 for this. Um, you can set the DSCP values like shown below uh, using the corresponding uh, toss value in hex. So you can see for so for expedited forwarding, so you can use iperf3 here. I'm setting, sending basically two megabits per second, and I'm marking the packets as, as EF from the client perspective. And this, the other corresponding code points that you'd use for these other DSCP values, in addition to just running iperf3 on the server itself to run this traffic. And then on Windows platforms, we did find uh, an option available as well called jperf that's you know kind of like iperf wrapped around uh, in a Windows environment and it works pretty similar to iperf3 the the only limitation that we found is that the dscp values that you set don't actually get honored by the operating system i think that's a it's a qos specific issue within windows i think it has to be set through group policy or something to to make this actually work but just be aware you can still use it to though to verify the rates you know that that they're uh, conforming correctly so in this example as well we're sending in two megabits per second And finally, for troubleshooting, you want to check resources for the TCAM usage. So this is, these are some dumps that we got from the NTL QA team just for cases where we've run out of uh, TCAM resources. So you can see in this example here for show resources, the ingress TCAM entries are zero. So this is uh, what to look for if, if you're starting to see uh, that policy not take effect or the, the remarking not occurring. You want to verify that that the try that you're not running out of TCAM resources, and the uh, commands that you can run to, to diagnose that are listed here as well. Okay, so onto the demo. So I'm going to use iperf3 in the environment, and I've recorded a, a video to just zip through this stuff. And so you'll see we're we're sending in traffic using an EF markings. And we'll show like from uh, these clients H1 and H2 iperf traffic to H3. We'll, we'll show the, the shared policy, also per interface policy, and we'll show the policy hit counts and, and how you would apply the classes and policies to to affect this uh, remarking within within the system. 
So let me close this really quick. And let me bring up my demo. OK, and just so for orientation, I've got the two switches up at the top at 6301 and 6302. And I've got three clients at the bottom. So host one, host two, and host three. Host three will host the iperf3 traffic in a moment. And so we're going to send traffic from both host one and host two using iperf at different uh, values. And, and we'll see the remarking and how it occurs. And you can see at the top left here, I've already configured the policy for iperf3 traffic but I haven't applied it to the port yet. So let's just kind of advance the demo. So we're changing the QoS trust to, to trust DSCP where it's um, set to none by default. So setting that on both systems. And so this on 6302, this is where I'm creating the iperf 3 traffic class. Uh, effectively just to monitor um, or match the traffic so that we can count it to, to verify that the remarking is occurring correctly. Let's see if I can zip through this a little bit so you don't have to just sit there and watch it. Okay, so this is where we're creating the policy. Matching on the IP or three traffic. And this is where we're applying it to the interface. Okay, and this is where we're just looking at the policy remark on exceed, and we can see that we've we applied that configuration. And so what I did in the in the demo as well, just so you're aware. So I wanted to have well, three different rules here in a, in, a, in a sense. So in the first case, rule 10 just allows a traffic. So we want to verify our tools are matching the rates that we expect to see without even doing any remarking at, at all. And then rule 20 here is showing the exceed drop action, which is available prior to 10.13 to show what that looks like. And then finally, we, we have the, the 10.13 traffic class uh, specified here. So. We'll go through this where we just we will run the iperf3 traffic. We'll remove uh, rule 10 and then re remove rule 20 to get us to the 10.13 uh, version where we uh, uh, where we provide this feature for exceed DSCP. Let's continue on. So we're starting up our iperf3 server. And then starting the client traffic. And so we're going to specify. Uh, so that's a time interval of 10 seconds, uh, two megabits per second. And then we're going to specify the code point for expedited forwarding. And we match on the right port, which is 5001. Okay, so with this policy in effect, it, we're really just not doing anything. We're just allowing the traffic to flow. So we can see that on the left, we're sending in two megabits per second. And then on the right for host three, we're, we're seeing that the two megabits per second is achieved on the right hand side. And so this is where we're looking at our hit counts policy on both sides. And we'll have to re refresh the traffic flow in a moment here so we can actually see these values. So we can see that the EF traffic is flowing. There's there's no other traffic classes really that are being matched here. And this is where we're clearing the hit counts. So we got that back to zero. Showing our policy commands again. And so that this is where we're going to remove rule 10 so that now we're going to drop the traffic if it exceeds the one megabit per second. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and kick off the traffic again. And you can see that we do achieve less than one megabit set per second on the other side. So we're dropping a certain portion of that traffic, which is a one megabit per second overhead that we're dropping. And so we should see as well here, I'll start the traffic up again. And you should see the, the conform action here as well for you know the, the uh, KBPS that, that is conforming to the policy. And you should see that in a second. Yeah, so you see the one megabit per second here in the in the upper right.
And so this is pre 10.13 behavior. This was the only option that was available prior to 10.13. Okay, and so the next step is we're gonna go in and remove rule 20 from the policy so that we're no longer dropping the packet, but that we're gonna remark it for traffic that exceeds the one megabit per second. We're gonna remark that as CS, uh, CS0 actually in, in this demo. Okay, and we'll start kicking off the traffic again. So of note, we can see we're still getting two megabits per second, right? We're not dropping anything. It's just we're receiving all of the packets. It's just some of them are getting remarked. And you can see our conform action here is still one megabit per second. It's just showing the interface utilization. You can change the rate interval down to five seconds to keep it. That's the minimal setting you can set. So if you want to see the megabits per second real time, that's what you'd have to do. And so on the right, you can see now we do we are seeing CS0 and EF traffic. Uh, so the traffic is getting remarked, even though we're only sending in EF traffic from the client perspective. And this is where we're showing that the interface is, so this is a shared policy so you can see interface 111 and 112 are both members of that policy so now what we're going to do is apply the per interface option to the policy so that we have a unique rate limit of one megabit per second for each of the ports uh, involved in the test so h1 and h2 And so now you can see that once we run the, the show policy command, now we have the 111 and 112 ports are separated so that they have unique rate limit policies per port. And that does use additional TCAM resources as well. That is something to be aware of. So we're just coming to the closure of the demo. We're just gonna show just h1 and h2 sending traffic in and and but they have unique hit counts so we'll see that in a moment okay so kicking off traffic from host one and then kicking off traffic from host two Okay, one last time, we'll take a look at the policy hit counts. And you can see that host two now we've got, well, for host one and host two, we've got the packets getting remarked. And so that's the end of the demo. Let me go ahead and close this down. And so with that, I wanna thank you all for attending the session and I hope this has been valuable. If, if there are any questions, feel free to reach out.